Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I'm spending some time this week finally with the 2016 GMC Canyon Duramax. This is the turbo diesel that's really a first in the class for North America and while I've driven it before, this is the first time I've actually got an entire week to spend with it to see what it's really like to live with. Now the GMC Canyon is the same truck as the Chevrolet Colorado, but they were nice enough to us to give us a completely different styling in the front end, the fenders, the hood, the rear deck, everything that you see on this truck from the sheet metal standpoint, with the exception of the cab, is different on the GMC than it is on the Chevrolet, and that's something that maybe 10 years ago they weren't doing. So as you can see here, the GMC gets a little bit more of an upscale look. You've got a lot of chrome here, you've got projector beam headlamps, you've got chrome down there as well as fog lights. Now that air dam that you see down there, that is something that's purely about fuel economy. I know some of the Chevrolet Z71 guys out there like to pull that thing off for true off-roading because it can get in the way, but this isn't a truck that's really aimed for off-roading so much. It's more about luxury, it's about style, and in that way you can get this with a body color grill. There are some other trim combinations you can get, but on this truck here, because we are in the top trim grade, it has polished aluminum 18-inch wheels, which are pretty nice. Those are a few steps up from the standard grade wheel. Now one thing about this truck is it is the same truck as the global truck that's sold around the world by Chevrolet. The cab itself, from the fenders back and to the bed, the cab is almost identical to that truck. So if you're in another market around the globe, you might recognize the look of the silhouette there. In America, of course, they've given us our own sheet metal when it comes to everything from these windows down. Now one of the things, if you're driving around and you see one of these trucks and you're wondering, is it a diesel? One of the biggest ways you can tell is this exhaust pipe. This has got a big, huge exhaust pipe on it that's completely different than the one you're gonna find on the gas models. And that's for two different reasons. One, obviously, it's, it's a marketing visual. But secondly, if you look down in behind there, there's actually air inlets further in, and that's something most diesel vehicles have, trucks at least. And what that does is it kind of siphons air in from behind and mixes it with the exhaust, which is actually kind of a, uh, telltale way as to how they actually help it pass smog because if you water down the exhaust stream well parts per million it pollutes a little less so that's just something a lot of diesel pickups have now one thing this has which is kind of a general motors thing because ford has their man step they have the bed step here in the bumper and it actually makes getting in and out of the box quite easy you don't have to open the tailgate to use that man step it's just right there in the bumper now another cool option this has is the spray on bed liner now they've been around for a long time but it's only been in the last few years that factories have really got into offering this and that's kind of a nice thing i do have a question about these and maybe somebody out there can answer it that's had one of these for a while and that is you know i do wonder what it's going to look like right now it's all fresh it's black it's brand new look and it really looks nice What's it going to look like in five years after the sun fades it a little bit? Or if you really use it a lot, does it scrape? Does it wear? Do you get wear spots in it? That's something I'm kind of curious about if I were actually shopping for one of these. But on the surface of it, I really do like the fact that it is now a factory option. The color on this one is an optional shade, copper red metallic, that's paired with a cocoa and dune leather interior. In the SLT, there's a lot of creature comforts like power seats for both the driver and passenger, and they're both heated as well. Upgraded trims include accent stitching on soft pieces and wood grain accents on the door panels, the console, as well as the dash panel itself. The center stack is well laid out with expected cubbies and cup holders, but still slim on storage. The GMC gets a unique leather wrapped steering wheel that's different from the Chevrolet Colorado, complete with controls for the audio and the instrument cluster. There, it has a digital screen in the center for trip information and vehicle settings. Back seat in the Canyon, I think, is pretty much mid-class. These are not big full-size trucks when you're sitting in the back, so it certainly doesn't feel like it. This is very much like a compact car. And in some ways, it's even a little bit, well, a little bit tighter because as you can see here, pretty low seating position, and it can't be much higher because there's not a lot of height in this cab. There is good headroom, but if they raise the seat up to a point where it would be comfortable, then you wouldn't have headroom. So what I've got here is my knees are kind of perched up, and it might be okay for a short trip, but if this were a long road trip, I'd probably want to sit up front because it's much more comfortable up there. The one thing I'd point out, there are no HVAC vents here, which here in Arizona, when it gets hot in the summer like it's starting to right now, um, that would be a bit of a problem. But at least the kids will be happy because there's USB ports back here to plug in and charge with, and of course, there's a 12-volt outlet. 
The rear seat folds down in two different ways. You can pull the lower cushions upward for taller items, but there isn't exactly a flat load floor, though you can see a nice underseat storage area. The other folding configuration is down flat, but it is higher up. Either way, I think this is a better solution than what's offered in the Toyota Tacoma. I have to say I'm pretty happy with the interior. It's very comfortable sitting here. The overall size of this truck has a nice visibility. It's just got a nice overall feel from behind the wheel. Getting comfortable here is easy. As we talked about getting comfortable in the back seat, not quite as easy, but if you're spending most of your time up front, you're gonna be pretty happy here. The materials quality is generally good, and you can tell they've actually stepped it up a little bit like here on the dash when it comes to the actual trims because you're in the GMC. The Chevrolet has a different bit of trim here here and there so you can tell that you stepped up into a more premium product now I will say this color combination the tan and brown not quite my bag I probably go for the blacks but overall I think they've done a nice job here the switch gear the overall quality is pretty decent so I give the interior four stars Technologies in the Canyon included the option top-of-the-line 8-inch color touchscreen audio navigation system with IntelliLink suite of applications. A Bose premium audio system kicks out some pretty decent sound and it's very easy to use. The menus and graphics are well laid out and better yet, it offers Apple CarPlay along with its Bluetooth, USB and auxiliary connectivity. Unfortunately, Android Auto is not yet a part of the picture. In all, technology score in at 4 or 5 stars. Now, what I was honestly most excited about in testing this truck is what's under the hood. The 2.8 liter four cylinder turbo diesel engine is one that's well proven around the globe before it ever arrived here, so that's good right out of the gate. It has 181 horsepower, which doesn't sound like a lot, but its torque at 369 pound feet makes it totally truck worthy. Made it to a six speed automatic transmission, in this truck it's rated at 20 MPG city, 29 MPG highway, and 23 MPG combined. I don't know how well you can hear that here on our audio, but you can tell when you're driving this thing that you're in a diesel pickup. It's a four-cylinder diesel. They tend to be a little bit, well, less smooth than a V8 or a V6 that you're going to find in some of the larger pickups out there. But it has the same sound, has the same fuel. Turbo lag, a little bit of turbo lag right off the stop. But the thing is, it just has a nice willing personality to it. The vibration isn't too bad. It still is a little bit on the agricultural side and that's not a bad thing if you like diesels. If you're not used to them, it might be the first thing you really notice when you start driving this truck. Now this six-speed automatic transmission, because we do have a very slow revving engine, they've made the shifts nice and tight. It has a torque converter, that grips very much like a clutch, at least that's the way it feels. And so when you're driving around town like I am right now, the shifts tend to be pretty stiff and it feels a lot like a DSG type transmission, even though it is a traditional automatic. But it seems to work pretty smooth. They do have a vibration damper that they put in this vehicle that seems to be doing a pretty good job. That's full acceleration we're doing here. Full acceleration is what I would call deliberate. It isn't immediate. This is a diesel. It's not meant to be fast, and it certainly isn't. You do have a nice feeling of torque here, but if you're looking for something that you're gonna go out and race with, this certainly isn't what you're gonna want. A diesel is all about fuel economy, it's all about towing, and that's what this is gonna give you. The powertrain has a lot of unique technical details and intricacies that help it achieve its fuel economy and tow rating as high as 7,600 pounds. If you want to know more about all of that, click on the link down below in our information section for a detailed under the hood video. In sum total though, this powertrain earns 5 of 5 stars for this review. Given that this is a pretty comfortable interior to sit in, the ride goes right along with it. it doesn't ride too jittery. It's actually got a pretty solid chassis under it in the way it feels. The steering feel has a nice 
light feel to it, yet it's not too fast. But you know it's stiffly sprung enough to have the towing rating that it does because, well, when you can tow 7,500 pounds, you don't want a super soft suspension that's going to get squishy when you put weight on it or when you're trying to control the weight of a trailer behind you. But that said, as I drive around town here, because this is a mid-sized truck, I really like the maneuverability of it. I like full-size trucks, don't get me wrong, but and this is just so much easier to live with. If I were buying a truck, this is something that I see myself being much happier with, much more comfortable with, just because driving around town, especially in my neighborhood, it's just a lot easier to manage. It's a lot easier to maneuver with. The ride out here on the highway is pretty quiet. There's a lot more wind noise than I remember driving this vehicle last time, but the ride is nice and smooth and quiet. Now we're headed out to the washboard gravel road next, We'll see how that goes. The Desert Washboard Road is actually a pretty good test of how well put together the vehicle is. It's really sort of a texture test because this washboard surface really creates vibrations, it creates harmonics that can make very well put together vehicles feel like they're not. And so I like to do that and it also gives you a good idea of how well tuned the chassis is, how solid all the ball joints, the bushings, how everything works together. What I'm finding out here is I'm pretty impressed. Most trucks I come out here with the expectation that it's going to be jittery. I'm going to have rattles in the suspension because it's body on frame. I expect that there's going to be a lot of noise in the chassis over some of these bumps. You know, I'm, I'm not really getting that here. This feels very rubbery. It feels very tightly put together. I'm not getting any shuddering in the steering, no kickback. As you can tell, it's kind of a rough road. I'm getting bumped around a little bit, but not a lot of rattling in the interior trims. It's just pretty impressive, I think. It's really above class, at least in terms of the Toyota Tacoma that I drove out here. That is the most recent vehicle I drove, and it didn't quite perform as well in this particular arena. I didn't really do an off-road oriented test here, as this truck really isn't aimed for that. It's more of an on-road use type packaging. GMC offers their off-road themed all-terrain model for that. As tested, however, I was impressed with its ride and handling, its midsize maneuverability, and its refinement, which puts it 5 of 5 stars in the chassis department. The last remaining front, which impressed me well, was the Canyon's build quality. Fit and finish inside and out were near flawless, which says a lot because I tend to be a little tougher on American brands, right or wrong. Aside a rattle or two on the rougher road, it was near perfect at 5 of 5 stars for quality feel. When it comes to safety, the IIHS hasn't yet put the GMC Canyon or the Chevrolet Colorado through their full range of tests. The only one we have a measure on is the moderate offset crash in which it did earn a good rating. Well folks, rounding it up for the GMC Canyon, I gotta tell you I like it. I like it so much in fact, it goes on my I'd buy it list for 2016. Now there is a caveat to that and that is that I lump it together with the Chevrolet because they're really the same truck underneath all of the trim and the visuals inside and out. And to be honest with you, if I were actually buying this truck, I'd probably go for the Colorado Z71 because it really is more my flavor. This very nice luxurious truck, but it skis a little bit more mature than I feel. But that said, let's look at the specs. Now in this one right here, we're right around that $44,000, $45,000 range. That's pretty spendy for a mid-sized truck in my opinion, but you gotta keep in mind that the diesel engine here is about a $4,000 option, give or take, on the trim levels. And so if you take that out of the equation, we're down to around the $41,000 mark. And what do you compare that to? The Toyota Tacoma Limited, that is the closest thing in the market that you can really compare this truck to. And in my opinion, um, this has a nicer interior. It has more features for that dollar figure. So when it comes to valuing this thing, you have to look at how it compares against things like that. But also, in this case, you gotta look at the diesel. Now, honestly, the diesel, it isn't for everybody. I like them, I like the way they sound, I like the way they drive. I don't see a problem spending four grand for the diesel. Now, you can also look at the value equation there. Do the math on the fuel economy. If you're gonna keep the truck four or five years, chances are that'll pencil out over time when it comes to what you're gonna save in fuel costs. But even if it doesn't, you always look at diesels and the fact that generally speaking, they hold their resale value much better than a gas vehicle. So you almost always get that extra money back when you go to sell it or trade it in. Now that said, what does this do for fuel economy? Well, as you can see, 
I got 26 MPG this week with the truck. That's pretty impressive for any truck, let alone one that's got the payload and the towing capability this does. I really was impressed with that. So um, when we talk about value, I put that at five stars. When you put that in with everything else we've already talked about, we're at four and a half stars for the week, plus the I'd buy it list. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. You know, a little personal story. The first vehicle I really ever spent a lot of time driving, I learned to drive in, I took my driver's test in, was a 1984 Ford F-250 diesel. The 6.9 had a four-speed stick in it, which was really a three-speed stick, because first gear was really a crawl gear. The other three were what you were in and out of all the time. It's a huge truck. I mean, it was really something to learn how to drive in. And I think I really have to credit that for really being why it is I like diesel vehicles today. It was the first vehicle that really imprinted on me in a big way. So that just stuck with me. Anyway, if you like the test drive you just saw, click on the link right here on your screen. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We test drive one, sometimes two vehicles every week. Plus, there's a new video almost every single day. There's always something new. So stay tuned.